suspect has a history of mental episodes. And WLWT News 5's Brian Hamrick is live right now with the story. And Brian raises the question here, what's being done when someone is reported to have these ongoing mental health issues like this? Yeah, Mike, well, the shorter answer is not much. Now, if they agree to get help, uh, there's a lot of options for them. But forcing someone, even if they have very odd behavior, that's difficult. It ended in this. Police, SWAT teams, and one of the nation's most well-known companies closed. But it began like many other threats and even acts of violence. All you have to do is turn the television on every morning you see somebody who's got underlying mental health issues. In this case, like many, the suspect was on the radar and even had a mental evaluation. When you talk about it being a, a real tragedy, a real gap in our, our society and our system, it really is. I mean, we have nowhere to place severely mentally ill people right now until they do something very terrible. Scott O'Reilly was a Claremont County prosecutor for 19 years. He says even when there are clear red flags, the options are extremely limited. So it's a system that's designed to just wait for something bad to happen, and then we can put them in prison. In the case of the P&G threat, documents show in the previous 18 months, the man demanded for police to arrest Duke executives for cutting off electricity. When the man's sister called police over a dispute, the man threatened if they approached, quote, officers would die. He also demanded to talk to Donald Trump and Jack Kennedy. It's hard to answer the question, is there a gap? The services are there, and really the biggest gap is um, the individual's willingness and openness to get the treatment. Brad McGonigal is chief clinical officer for Talbert House. He says classifying who's a danger and who is not is complicated. So it's not always as, as black and white as, as we would like it to be. For now, many of the violent acts that are unrelated have a connection of prior episodes with mental health issues. Yeah, now, there are ways that people can be forced to get mental health treatment, but you have to go through the court. It's an extensive process, and that's why it doesn't happen in many of these cases. Reporting live, Brian Hamrick, WLWT News 5.